Hello everyone, welcome back to this week's edition of RHO Market Chat. Well, the usual disclaimer, whatever I'm going to say today is my own opinion, there's no inducement to trade. So as usual, we're going to recap on the, what I said last week and today we're going to talk about uh, the Wall Street Index and I have entitled today's market chat edge, watch for the capitulation. So last week, right, we talked about gold and I said that um, gold is uh, undergoing a consolidation. And uh, very soon we could see gold breaking out again. Well, last week gold uh, had very minimal movement in fact, it was range bound. Uh, in fact, after we spoke, uh, gold went up from 1942 to one, a high of 1973. It failed to break out and now we are back to the same level at 1940 again. So we spoke about Barack Gold. Uh, it was at uh, 2850, it went to a high last week of 3050 before pulling back again to 28.50 again. And uh, last week, I was getting everybody to watch um, a potential break or capitulation on the NASDAQ and the Wall Street Index. So I said that uh, NASDAQ was sitting pretty, uh, pretty on the 50-day moving average and I don't think it's going to hold that too long, all right? So that is why I give my lower targets at 10.350. So last week at this market chat, NASDAQ was trading at 11.87. It went to a low of 10.73, all right? And as of today, it has broken below the 50-day moving average. So I was pointing to initial break all right, of the Dow Jones index at 27,665. Well, it went to a low of 27,487. And today it has also broken below uh, the 50 day moving average. Well, I was clearly bearish on Hang Seng uh, and Hang Seng retreated uh, from 24,640 to uh, 23,928. All right, and I said that the Shanghai Shenzhen CSI 300 index is very close to the resistance at 5,000 and the upside is capped. All right, and therefore I was expecting some weakness in the CSI 300 index. All right, so so this week, uh, I'm going to talk about watching for the cat capitulation on the Wall Street Index. So last week, I posted this message on my blog and I said, hey, you know, watch for the Wall Street Index to correct further. So in that message, I pointed out to the Wall Street Index like NASDAQ, Dow Jones and S&P. By and large, they were all sitting pretty nicely on the 50-day moving average. Well, I have read many technical analyst reports and many of them seems to be very bullish on the market. And most of them, you know, gave the same prognosis. And the prognosis was we are in the bull market and this healthy correction that took us to the 50-day moving average could only mean a continuation in the uptrend uh, of the Wall Street indices. And therefore, many analysts are, they are calling a buy. But I chose to defer on my blog and I said, hey, hello, you know, if you have been watching uh, my program on the RHO chat on how I caught the 
recent top on NASDAQ index. And that was an important top. It was important because it hits my multi-year top on my trade plan. It was a multi-year top that hit and I was explaining that when this top is hit, it is a very significant resistance. And therefore, I believe that the downside is not over and Wall Street indices will break the 50-day moving average. And well, last week we had the event that could have potentially catapulted it was an event that many people right, thought will be a catalyst that will bring the Wall Street indices and the global market indices to new heights when the much expected FOMC cap rate lower for longer and Jerome Powell said that you know interest rate will stay zero for the next three years, all right? So that was a very powerful statement, but Wall Street's corrected, all right? You know, we had a rally last week, but uh, in the end, the market didn't take it too well because I think that the market perceived that the Federal Reserve has exhausted its option and has limited, limited tool now to further stimulate the economy. After all, what can the Fed do now, right? I mean, they have already reduced the interest rate near to zero. And even if they were to low, lower interest rate or bring it down to negative level, that will not move the needle, right? So, and in the FOMC, uh, the Fed chairman did urge the government or the White House to do more or the Congress to do more, all right, by introducing or approving the fiscal stimulus quickly. And uh, this is where we are at now, all right? So I think right now in, in most traders and investors' uh, head, all right, or their concern, all right, is, is this correction going to be a healthy correction or is it going to turn out to be a nasty route like we saw in early February this year? So this is where we are now, all right? So, and, um, you know, I just posted this S&P chart and you could see that S&P just last Friday started, just had a small crack, all right, below the 50-day moving average as I predicted. And uh, boy, why, why it was important to me really because the last time when the S&P broke below the 50-day moving average, all right, it went, crashing 35% from the top. So this is, could this be a start, all right, of a downdraft like, like what we witnessed in March? We really don't know, but, uh, you know, uh, the chart doesn't look good. All right, so let me just uh, help you uh, analyze this uh, deeper, okay? So, so this is the S&P trend behavior. Uh, in a accommodative monetary policy environment, which is what we will call the QE environment and monetary stimulus environment since 2009. So since 2009, right, we have seen the SMP all right, being supported at a 200-day moving average, but they also Peak, all right. They are not only supported by the 200-day moving average, they are resisted and also further supported by the 10% premium and discount provided by the 200-day moving average, as you could see in this long-term chart. All right. And last week, all right, last week, SMP, see, hits right at the top here, hitting my target at the 10% premium to the 200-day moving average. And that, therefore, I thought it was quite a bearish signal. And if, if the past statistic or the historical price action is something that uh, we can depend on, it looks like the SMP could head towards the next uh, support at the 200 level average, and that is about 3,100. And if it breaks the 200 level average, then we could see a more bearish market that could take us 
perhaps even to 2560, which is the 10% discount to the 200 day moving average. So, so this trend behavior, all right, since 2009 has been consistent, and I believe that it could happen again. All right, so looking at NASDAQ, all right, so NASDAQ, you know, if you have been watching this program in the last couple of weeks, I have been highlighting this, all right, I said, do not turn bearish on NASDAQ until it breaks this, this um, six months uptrend line. So this uptrend line, all right, has been there holding the NASDAQ up since it bottomed in March this year. And look here, I mean, just last week, it broke down from this uptrend line. And uh, from here, I believe that we should be heading towards a target, initial target of 10,170. And if that doesn't hold, all right, we should be seeing 9,725. And that is where I would expect the market to do a good rebound. All right, and you have heard about the wheels of NASDAQ, all right, so, oh, sorry, the wheel of NASDAQ uh, and the wheel of S&P, they make up about 20 to 25% of the S&P and NASDAQ index, all right? And that will be your Facebook, your Amazon, your Apple, your Netflix, your Google, all right? So, so those are the stocks, all right? And uh, if you have been just uh, watching the FANG index, it was the first one to break the 15 day moving average even before the Wall Street indices break. All right, so the, 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 the FANG index is already showing a crack and it has broken below the 50 day moving average. And this is the uptrend line that I have drawn on my trade plan. And if that the fangs were to continue to break below this uptrend line, then we could see more downside risk. All right, so this is the, the US China economic data ahead for the next one, two, two weeks. All right, uh, watch out for this. Okay, and uh, we should be seeing on 22nd, all right, 22nd, which is tomorrow, uh, existing home sales. And on Thursday, we could see, we see the initial jobless claim coming up, all right? And uh, for the China, Chinese index, very important PMI manufacturing data, worth watching, and it is due on 30th of September, okay? And so this is the, the end of uh, this week's uh, RHO Market Chat. I hope you enjoyed the program. Happy investing and uh, see you again. Bye -bye.